innovation we're experiencing isn't truly Web3. The majority of these early adopting major brands are, have, uh, have retained Web2 business models, merely incorporating blockchain technology and of course NFTs. Our guests believe that almost all implementation of the technology need to include the core principles and user benefits intrinsic to authentic Web3. Hello everyone, this is Insights by Daily Crypto News. I'm Sarah JK Remote, your host today. In, in Insight, we provide in-depth approaches to the crypto industry. This is a special corner of Daily Crypto News. Justin is the co-founder of Boson Protocol, the decentralized public infrastructure for commerce that anyone can use and everyone can trust. Boson was started under a strong belief that Web3 would foster a new economy and for the Web3 economy to take shape, it would need trust minimize exchange of real world assets with the same strong and verifiable guarantees as on-chain assets. Now, Boson is the, is the de facto de-commerce infrastructure ready for everyone. Hello, Justin. Welcome to Insights. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thank you for joining us today. I think we can start right in, but from the beginning. Um, we see a lot of words, Web3, and how do you see Web3 is going? Uh, new paradigm shift and all. Do you think we're on track? Well, we're seeing we're seeing a lot of adoption, which is good. Um, the challenge is that I think this adoption is, misunderstands or misses um, the essential elements of Web3 and so is not real adoption. Um, it's kind of like fake Web3 or um, uh, as, as we're calling it out as sort of Web3 washing. Um, so what, what I mean by that is, um, I mean, let's go back and remind ourselves what, what Web3 generally is all about. I mean, Web3 very famously, uh, you know, was described by Gavin Woods, one of the uh, co-founders of Ethereum, um, as a response to the fact that Web2 is broken. So overall, we've got this set of technologies that, you know, enable people to protection for, for, from ec economic exploitation, um, protection from data misuse, protection from being screwed by monopolies, um, enabling people to have a fair share of the value they create, you know, ownership and governance of their networks and brands, you know, and direct relationships. So this, this whole set of kind of liberty technologies that, that Web3 is, is, is designed um, to deliver. But more specifically, and I guess the point that, that we're making specifically is if you look at, for example, Web3 commerce. Um, so um, a, a lot of brands are now engaging in on what they're calling sort of Web3 three, three, three commerce. Um, if you take the on-chain example, um, if I go and purchase an NFT from you or for, from a brand, um, then just the very nature of, of blockchains mean that that transaction can be atomic. And what we mean by atomic is either both sides of the transaction happen or, or, or none at all. Um, so essentially yeah. what this means is that you have got these kind of like hard property rights that, you know, there is a transfer of this digital NFT um, that you don't need to trust any intermediaries. So it's trust minimized. And then you've got these strong and verifiable guarantees that once that NFT is in your wallet, you own it. And all of this is important. Yeah cryptographically it's not like you've got to send your money and cross your fingers that you're going to get the nft right so web3 is all about yeah. these strong verifiable claims and 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 removing the need to trust anyone that's exactly the same if i send you bitcoin it's not the same as me sending you a check um and so but but what we see with web3 commerce when we're doing like physical web3 commerce is very often brands are saying, oh, okay, if you want to buy this pair of sneakers, this is represented as an NFT. It's a physical NFT. And so um, send me the money, you know, let, let, or let's get, exchange the money for the NFT. Now you have an NFT and, and you have to trust that that's going to redeem for the physical, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't have any of these strong and verifiable guarantees of Web3. And if you've got a trust, that an NFT will redeem for a physical. There's no point using an NFT in the first place. You may as well just, just like Web2 Commerce, just send someone an email or, you know, just send them a voucher or whatever that, that is a promise to pay type thing. So I think 
we need to get back to these essential principles of what, what Web3 is about, which is, you know, you don't have to trust anyone and you have these strong and verifiable guarantees that if you own an, an NFT that has a claim on a physical asset, that you've got these strong and verifiable guarantees that either you get that physical asset or you get your money back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that uh, quotation that I mentioned in the earlier, the Web3 washing uh, as an emperor's clo new clothes. And then everybody knows that story. And could you tell me a little bit more about that quotation, too? Yeah, because, <clears throat> I mean, all of this sort of physical Web3 commerce that we see, and obviously like Boson Protocol is a protocol that, has been designed to solve this super hard problem of how do I, how do we do commerce um, without yeah. having to trust any intermediaries, right? And so, mm -hmm. but all of this commerce that we're seeing, where oh, that you know, this brand is tokenizing a handbag. Um, so now you go and buy this physical NFT. I've now bought the NFT, uh, and then I have to go and redeem for for, for the handbag. All of this is like. It, 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 it reminds me of how VCs used to say, well, you know, why do you need a blockchain? Why do you need to use an NFT or a blockchain? And what has any of that got to do with Web3 if it's still you send me the money and trust that I will send you the, the goods, right? So that's the kind of like Web3, it's applying, it's using some of the file formats of, NF, of, of, of NFTs, which are, you know, Web3 file formats, Um but doesn't give you any of the underlying properties. And so it's, you know, what, the reason we say it's kind of Web3 web washing is because it's this kind of Web3 veneer without any of the underlying kind of claims. But also, you know, the emperor's new clothes, because so clearly for anybody that understands Web3 gets that this is just a completely trusted system. It has nothing to do. And, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a kind of bubble that's set to, 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 to really burst. And I think especially as we head, fingers crossed, into this new bull run, when you, you know, you're going to yeah. find lots more really crypto savvy. I mean, most crypto people that have crypto are not spending it at the moment, right? They're either holding it yeah. or they've sold it. Um, because in a year's time, a pair of sneakers that cost you 0.1 ETH today, that, you know, your ETH could be worth 10 times in, in, in a year, right? So, you know, I think it's a really important point for brands to recognize that this is a very inauthentic use of Web3 technology. And there's a real opportunity for brands here to understand what real Web3 is about and implement more authentic and beneficial um, solutions. Yeah, I, I totally agree with the Emperor's new clo uh, clothes because whenever new major brands launches something using blockchain technology or just NFT for that matter, people are chanting that they're um, exercising Web3, but in reality, it's just very simple gimmick that most times it's nothing to do with Web3 technology. And I, I think it was a very, very uh, brave and bold move to just call them out. But in your opinion, then, do you think um, what kind of uh, uh, actual authentic use cases of <clears throat> Web3 that you see? Well, you know, using technology like Boson Protocol, the, the difference with, with, with using our protocol is that, you know, in this, you're able to tokenize a physical asset. Um, so you know, you, you're, you're able to take a, a physical product and using Boson Protocol, tokenize that so that the buyer gets an NFT. But that NFT has like full DeFi level um, guarantees. So the protocol uses game theory to lock up those funds. And then if that NFT gets traded from person to person to person, um, well, Unless that end person that redeems that NFT for the physical gets the physical, um, they will get their money back, right? It, there's not this opportunity for oh, I go go on to OpenSea and oh, there's a, there's an NFT there for a for a physical that's been sold, changed hand a few times. Let me go and buy that. I buy it and then I go to try and redeem and ah, sorry, it's already been redeemed or sorry, we, you know, we don't. So, you know, the use cases there are to cre to create physical 
Web3 commerce that has the same sort of trust guarantees as DeFi, right? If I put my money into a DeFi protocol, then, yeah. you know, I, I can inspect the contracts, etc. I, I I can see for myself, I'm not trusting anyone, I get, I, I get, I get the money back. And so <clears throat> this also leads to an entirely new sort of economy, if you like, because, you know, if you're not having to trust and you haven't got the risk and the doubt of whether these assets are going to settle, then, yeah. you know, you can combine these the, these these assets into building blocks like we've already seen in, in, in DeFi with like yield farming, where you take something out of one protocol, plug it into the other, and you get these almost like economic computations. But and so these are the like the fundamental properties of Web3 that make it different. Right. And so if you're going to build, I mean, naturally on chain assets of all these hard property rights, you know, so like we described, I can send you money and you send me an NFT in, in a completely simultaneous um, sort of transaction. Um, when we're dealing with off chain assets, you know, like real world products, etc., we need to enable that same sort of, you know, hard tokenization, if you like, in order yeah. that it, that it qualifies for being web three. And then you get all of these other benefits. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, talking a little bit about that decentralization of the economy in a sense of, uh, commerce. So I could imagine, uh, the whole logistics of the economic backend will be decentralized. So maybe logistics of the physical goods might not be just yet, but then in the back end of redeeming uh, from from physical to the digital, uh, I think we we call these days digital as well. These these days, like that that back end part of the system of commerce, where nowadays uh, in a non I guess centralized system, uh, users cannot really see. Uh, could you kind of walk us through what happens when? Uh, when when uh, partners or users use the boson uh, ecosystem, sure. I mean, if I sort of just take take you through the flow, then what happens is a we if we have a, a brand that has a physical item that they want to tokenize using boson, they will uh, interact with the protocol through a DAP, upload um, that you know that as you would into any e-commerce system. Um, they, they can upload all the details of, of, of the item and it creates an offer. Then along comes um, a buyer. If, you know, if they like that offer, they will then commit their funds to the protocol and they receive then like a redeemable NFT. Um, and that redeemable NFT, that initial buyer can go and transfer, they can go and trade it, they can gift it to, you know, and it may change hands a number of times. It can get bundled. It can get combined with a digital wearable to be a, a, a digital, all of these different types of things. And um, yeah. we can have token gating, all of that, the usual programmable stuff. But then finally, someone will hold this redeemable NFT and decide that they want to redeem it for the physical. At that point, um, they can, th th this, uh, the, the eventual buyer can either go to the boson DAP or increasingly, you know, we, we've got like uh, plugins where um, the brand can actually plug the, the, the redemption site directly into their own website. And then the buyer will go and interact with that redemption widget, exchange details of where they, the, the, you know, the delivery, de delivery details, et cetera. And then the, the brand needs to, to sort of arrange delivery for that. If everything goes well, everything's fine, everyone gets paid. However, okay. if there's a problem, then what happens is there's some game theory within the protocol that seeks to get a mutual resolution between the two parties. And if that fails, it's escalated to an independent dispute resolver. So what this means is, if I'm a buyer and I go and buy an NFT that says it gives me a claim on a physical asset, I can buy that anywhere in the metaverse, on OpenSea, on a website, you know, from from whoever. And provided it's kind of, it, it, it's it's using Boson protocol, I know I don't need to trust who I bought it for from the, the the eventual seller or anything. I know that I I can inspect the contracts and see that either I'll get the item or my money back. Yeah. So yeah. that's how you know that's that's how it works. And then you know from a redemption point of view, then from the logistics. Yeah. Um, 
Of course, the seller can then plug in any logistics system they like. It's really agnostic on, you know, whether that's a regional or global, it really doesn't matter. All that matters is, does the buyer receive the item according yeah. to the agreement or not? If they do, everybody gets paid. If they don't, it goes into a dispute mechanism. Yeah. 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 I, I would like to talk a little bit more about this redeemable NFT and, and uh, how much of a need do we have? I, I personally, I still have a... Um, I would say also in, 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 in broader sense of Web3 technology, a lot of people, majority of the people are, are accustomed to the centralized system where you just give away your trust and uh, let them do their job. And whatever that is lost, um, you have to just figure it out yourself according to the uh, counterparty's policy that I, I at some point just agreed uh, while using their uh, service and but in theory I think that I would love to know all the process behind it so that I am guaranteed to have the uh, goods that I bought uh, through the commerce platform but in in reality how much is the need for it or is there some numbers that we can look at uh, to prove that uh, a lot of lost fund or lost uh, goods um, using the centralized system well, <clears throat> I mean, it, it is a huge problem in, in commerce at the moment. I think um, one way to look at it is, you know, there's essentially there's a trust problem and it's called in economics, it's called the fair exchange problem, which is if I want to do business over the internet and I don't know, or, you know, I need to, I need to trust someone, right, as a buyer. Yes. Um, and so if you look at, for example, the Amazon, you know, you know Amazon has recently just been um, sued by the FTC for illegally maintaining a, a monopoly, also 17 US states for illegal, illegal mono, monopolistic behavior. So yes. one solution to this trust problem is Amazon, right? OK, you know, if I want to go and buy stuff with people I don't know or trust, then let me trust an intermediary. But then what happens is that intermediary becomes a monopoly, has outsized market power, extracts from sellers, extracts from buyers, you know, and ends up decimating competition. So that, 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 that's, a, you know, there is a industry wide requirement. Now, what Boson does, and this is kind of characteristic of these technologies that web, that, you know, that web three are, is replaces some of this broken web two system with basically a piece of code that you can trust and you can trust it because you can expect inspect the smart contracts and even i can't edit those smart contracts right the agreement is cast in stone so sitting between yeah. buyer and seller you've got boson that does the same job as someone like an amazon but instead of you know don't be evil it can't be evil it's a piece of code that can only execute as, as designed. And so these are like the fundamental principles of, of, of Web3. We, you know, we know what the problems are with, 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 with Web2, and we've designed these systems to shift some of the power back to the consumer so that now, in order for you to trust that, you, you know, that you, that, that for you to solve that uh, fair exchange problem and solve this kind of, tr these trust issues, you don't have to give your data and kind of control away to, you know, intermediaries like Amazon. Yeah. 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 I, I understand you have a very broad spectrum of expertise from traditional e-commerce and e-commerce to the uh, blockchain and, and even DeFi level of Web3 technology. And, and how do you see uh, nowadays, like, the, the needs of adopting this technology in the commerce? Like, have you seen any practical cases um, that is exercising those? So, I mean, at the moment, where we are with, I think, Web3 in general is we're in the middle of a bear market. Um, yeah. There's a lot of, I mean, demand, even if you look at people like OpenSea, I saw like last month that they're down year on year. But if you zoom out and take a longer timeline, um, we, we see this kind of, you know, this kind of exponential upward trend in usage and overlaid is the cycle, right? And we're, mm -hmm. we're at the sort of what I think is the end of the, of the, of the bear cycle. 
Yeah. So, I mean, the last time we had a, a bear a bull market, um, we were still very much on a prototype. Um, we had, well, we did the, a couple of two years ago the first Metaverse Fashion Week. We had people like Tommy Hilfiger, Hogan. We had a whole load of NFT projects. Everything was booming, um, and we 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 struggled because we we only had like a prototype to run these things on. Now we have a full decentralized commerce protocol. We've got a DAP. We're building um, bridges uh, to, to mainstream with you know integrations with Uniswap, MoonPay, and custodial wallets like Magic, so that so that we have a a real real Web three, but with a with a, a Web two user experience. Um, yeah. Plus, in addition, we've 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 just announced a major partnership with WooCommerce. So WooCommerce are part of sort of WordPress and Automatic. And about about forty percent of the web, about forty percent of all websites run on their technology stack. So we've just announced um, a big strategic partnership with them. We'll be integrating with them. So very soon, by the end of the year, um, WooCommerce merchants will be able to three commerce with bows on directly um from 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 their Woo, woocommerce application so yeah i mean we are continuing to build and, and and use this kind of bear market to plug into all of this infrastructure and when the next bull market comes we're sort of product ready um uh to to onboard sort of mass adoption and 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 you know having spoken to lots and lots of brands i think um the feeling is that this year um yeah. crypto you know, in some in some quarters, crypto's you know got a is a bit of a dirty word. It's got a bit of a bad reputation with FTX, right. etc. But um, all of these brands are standing, sort of waiting for that to change. And I think as when we see this new bull market, we're once again going to have a very very active, um, very crypto savvy demographic of people with loads of money, loads of crypto that are going to want to spend that crypto. And they're going to want to spend, they know what authentic Web3 is, and they're going to yeah. want to spend that in an, in an authentic way. So, yeah, I think we are on the on the verge of another significant wave of adoption. Okay, that, that sounds really nice. I, 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 I think a lot of the mistakes that Web3-centric or Web3-native people uh, make is, is that we only, like, look inside the box and then go with our plan and towards that mass adoption of Web3, but we don't really know how to practically make that happen. So I think it's very insightful to know what is so-called outside world is thinking and what we can actually serve them to go, get close to them. Um, and personally, I have also seen different infrastructure companies that that is not necessarily uh, so famous in the Web3 centric communities, but already providing technology to uh, actual companies, uh, Web2 companies, or someone who, who in needs of the certain components of Web3 technology. And and do you think it's, I'm, I'm understanding, right, in terms of Busan as well? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, at this point in, 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 in the kind of history of Web3, you know, the, uh, in a bear market, now is a really good time to build out your product and connect yeah. to these, you know, connect to Web2 companies that are really forward thinking. Like I said, you know, you know, for us, WooCommerce, and we've got a number of the, these other announcements that we're, we're, we're going to make because, sure, community, consumer desire, demand is relatively low, but if we can if we can connect to these scaled distribution channels then when we see that next bull market you know we can literally capture uh, mass, yeah. masses of adoption across the economy rather than be limited to the number of individual brands that we can onboard or yeah. you know uh, for example so um so yeah i think um i think next year or you know perhaps even towards the end of this year we're going to see this next wave of adoption and um I mean, and also let's not forget that the younger generation, crypto is, it's not new, it's not hard, it's not difficult. It's, you know, in the same way as, you know, younger generations that grew up with the internet and iPads, you know, those those kids teach their grandparents how to use an iPad or whatever. The next generation that have now grown up with crypto, crypto is just, 
the basics of, 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 of you know, it, it's just like the web was to those of us who grew up in, you know, in, in, the, in the age of the web. So um, the rate of change and adoption, I think, is going to be quite, quite surprising. And, and I think brands, a lot of brands recognize um, in the same way that web one, web two, social and mobile all cause these, these, these big demands for them to change or, or or else become irrelevant i think they understand that web3 is another such wave and and um there's going to be a competition to keep up yeah i i, I couldn't agree more on the um fact that we're if we zoom out a little bit all the new technology that we have adopted is it's incredible in the beginning to until now that we're already so used to it. Now it seems like AI is going to be just another language for every kids in the world. And I hope crypto would be also that way. But what, what can we do uh, as someone who is actually kind of driving that growth uh, to um, be patient, but also at the same time kind of push forward so that the next generation can enjoy that technology? Well, I think... I think one of the things is doing what we're doing now, which is explaining and articulating what real Web3 is, what the benefits and because, yeah, a danger is that, well, Web3 is not a, a, a trivially simple technology, right? There is complexity and nuance there. And so the danger is that that doesn't get transmitted and what gets transmitted is a super thin, a superficial layer this kind of web three washing gets transmitted and then it becomes a fad that fades out. We need yeah. to. Uh, and so what I and a number of other founders are, 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 are trying to do is cause this kind of paradigm shift by sort of just explaining and sometimes exposing the fact that a lot of this, this initial adoption, we, we love the embracing of web three, but it's not real web three and, and kind of trying to, trigger this paradigm shift, explain what real real Web3 is, and also support and encourage brands to partner with, 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 with us and, you know, real decentralized projects like Boson and, men, and many others. Um, partner with us and we can make, we, we've already solved these hard problems. We can make doing real Web3, you know, easy and, and give you kind of competitive advantage. Mm, yeah. Makes sense. Then kind of reversing the question, what do you think uh, it's like close to impossible problem that we're encountering now uh, that you personally or or at the work um, that we're, we're, we're struggling with? Well, I think the big challenges for crypto are the regulatory environment. You know, this uh, it is. I believe that underlying the, the regulatory challenges we're getting from the US is the state, the current status quo and, uh, you know, realizing that crypto is a fundamental game changer in terms of handing, you know, control and power to the people, uh, yeah. whether that's through currency, whether that's through, you know, kind of more, more democratic um, institutions and stuff. And I think that is you know, uh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the biggest battle um, that, that we face. And I think also, you know, the, 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 the very volatile swings in, 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 in terms of, you know, the, the crypto markets, um, a lot of it triggered by um, the macroeconomic, but also a lot of it through these kind of challenges within crypto. That one, I think over time, um, I mean, the internet went through two massive busts and people declared it dead and look at it now. Um, <clears throat> and you don't get, you know, booms and busts really in the internet anymore. So I think that one will probably solve itself. But I think there's direct op opposition from the status quo for uh, against um, crypto because I think crypto is essentially like a liberty tech and those yeah. people are already in power. The last thing they want is to hand that power to us. That totally makes sense. I, I think regulations, um, I, I am definitely pro to having uh, constructive and um, broad, but also specific uh, regulations in place for cryptocurrency. 
so that at least we, I, I, and a lot of crypto centric people doesn't have to fight to uh, fight for the existence of the cryptocurrency or the Web3 technology. And then I think we can move on to many different aspects of development of, uh, of this technology. Would you, um, as a last question, uh, forecast or shed some lights on, on the next uh, 2024 in the crypto industry, what we should look out for? Well, <clears throat> I think in terms, of, well, firstly, I think it, it seems that uh, these Bitcoin ETFs are imminent, and I would, uh, I, I would expect to see those um, before the year is out, and I think that is going to be a huge fire hose of, 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 of kind of uh, value, and uh, you know, coming into crypto, which will trigger the next bull run. We then got the Bitcoin halving um, early next year, so. All of these things, I think, will trigger a, a new bull run. But I think historically, crypto has been DeFi tokens, NFTs. So it's kind of like magic internet money and expensive JPEGs. Um, as crypto now reaches into the real world through real world asset tokenization of gold and commodities and real world asset tokenization in commerce, the scope of the value that, that crypto is going to be transaction, tran transacting is probably going to 100 or 1,000x. And I think that is, you know, we've, we've developed all this technology that's amazing for transacting value in a kind of secure and reliable way, but we're only transacting a small, tiny patch of value, right? As we connect now into the real world, I think we're going to now be using these, these systems to transact maybe a hundred thousand times more more value, and I think that is over over the next let's say to the end of twenty twenty four. I think this is the period of what you know for for, for crypto when the, the kind of taps are opened to real world assets, and so yeah, I mean Boson is very well positioned uh, both in terms of commerce. Um, and we're also extending that same trust minimized engine to provide these kind of trust minimized guarantees um, for real world asset tokenization with kind of things like commodities and, and um, you know, whether that's kind of gold or um, various other um, financial assets as well. So I think a bright future uh, ahead, but we still need to navigate these kind of regulatory challenges. Okay, that's a wrap. Um, today, I, I, I got a lot of insights and me personally, when I look at news or what's going on in Web3, I really try hard to find practical, uh, rather extreme, but very practical use case where we can see in our daily life. And I think uh, Boson and the D-commerce fits into this uh, picture very well. Uh, so I love that we uh, touched a little bit on the Web3 status, uh, so to say, and then also the common cases of um, Web3 washing and who actually adopted very well and uh, with the example of Boson. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the show today. Thank you so much for listening to Insight and thank you, Justin, for joining us today. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Moving into some quick headlines. Asset management giant Fidelity filed an amendment to its proposed spot Bitcoin ETF, the Wise Origin Bitcoin Trust. And they did this with the SEC, obviously, late Tuesday. And they amended specifically how they would safeguard customers' Bitcoin in custody accounts and disclose risk related to the shaky regulatory environment around cryptocurrencies and other factors. This follows ARK Investments' spot Bitcoin ETF and BlackRock's spot Bitcoin ETF. Remember yesterday, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink suggested that there is pent up investor interest in the crypto market. I don't know about that. Yesterday seemed to buy the rumor and sell the truth. It looks like Coinbase's volumes are down in the US and they had a weaker than expected third quarter. The crypto exchange trading volumes fell around 17% and around 52% year on year. Did that hurt the stock price? No, 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 because the stock price is up more than 112% this year versus a 72% gain for Bitcoin and 29% gain for the NASDAQ. Reddit is winding down community points program. Sadly, sadly, 
It's a blockchain-based internet points program designed to reward creators and developers. And they're going to do this because they're going to favor prioritizing rewards programs that are less difficult to scale. They said that though we saw some future opportunities with community points, the resourcing needed was unfortunately too high to justify. Another reason was the regulatory environment that added a lot of effort to their mission. They said though the moderators and communities that supported the community points have been incredible partners, the product is no longer set up to scale. I think this is a good example of how regulation or lack thereof or lack of the clarity, and this isn't just Coinbase saying it, or crypto companies or people with stake in the game, this is somebody like Reddit that's like, hey, how can we use this technology or how can we use a technology to help our customers, to help our users, to help our product? And they said, we can't use this one because of lack of regulatory clarity. I mean, it makes sense because look, Congress came and pick a speaker. <laughs> so it makes sense that they can't make regulation or clear guidelines for blockchain. Now let's get into those crypto prices. Here comes the money. Here we go. Money talks. The time is 10.13 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Fear greets at 47. Neutral. Bitcoin sitting at $28,320, up 0.2% in 24. Ethereum's at $1,573, pretty much even. Teller's number three, Binance is at 212, up 0.4% in 24. I don't believe that. It seems about even. And XRP is down 0.2% at 48.9 cents. Rounding off the top 10, we have USDC, Solana, Cardano, Doge, and Tron. The total market cap is sitting at 1.09 trillion with a Bitcoin dominance of 51. An ETH dominance of 17.4. And that was our show today. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Justin from Boson Protocol. I hope that you don't mind us doing some interviews. Let me know. Email me, matt at dailycryptonews.net. We're trying to expand, get more content out there, get more eyes on the show so we can grow, so this can be sustainable for everybody. Um, but let me know if you think the format. Should we put this in a separate thing? Should we put interviews out only on weekends in long form on Saturdays and Sundays? Should we do two shows during the week? For example, put out the news in the morning and then the long form later so you don't have to go through a long form for news should we just have it in one podcast and i just tell you this timestamps, or do you enjoy the interviews and you don't mind listening to the whole thing let me know we're trying to create a show that you want to listen to and that fits into your lifestyle again matt at dailycryptonews.net or you can email sarah at sarah at dailycryptonews.net i'll see you tomorrow until then happy huddling everyone <laughs>